and then we ask the interviewer, hey, is that good or not? And they're like, no, do something a little bit more complicated. Hi everyone, today I'm gonna to solve a data analytics case study problem. First, we're gonna go over what constitutes a data analytics problem, a framework for how to tackle it, and then a step-by-step -step explanation of diving into it. So first off, what is a data analytics case study? For our purposes, I've defined data analytics case study problems as any problem that requires one, formulating metrics for a hypothetical scenario, and two, writing a SQL query or analyzing a data set in Python to retrieve those metrics. For example, the problem we're tackling today involves understanding how to build a new audio chat feature to improve the match rate between car buyers and sellers in a marketplace app. Now, if you're thinking that data analytics case study questions sound very similar to product metrics type questions, you're probably right. And for all intents and purposes, most product metrics questions fall under the umbrella of data analytics. It's just that, that product metrics questions are more focused around product case studies. So for example, it'd be something like, uh, how would you investigate a 10% drop in Uber ride requests, right? Or let's say that we wanna launch a new feature for Uber. How would you analyze results? So all those product metrics questions are focused around a specific product itself. And so data analytics can be a little bit more broad than that. The second main difference is that data analytics case studies questions, we actually expect the candidate to use SQL or Python to actually implement their metrics. Whereas in product metrics case study questions, you're usually just kind of brainstorming different ideas, clarifying the question, giving out structured analysis without actually diving into the data itself because there is no data, it's a hypothetical scenario. So data analytics case studies, what you'll find is that they'll actually give you an actual data set. Many times this will happen in a take home assignment or an official phone screen, or even on an onsite where the interviewer will basically just give you a data set and a Python Jupyter notebook and be like, go to ham. It's kind of nice because basically it kills two birds with one stone. If you're an interviewer, they're trying to assess how you do on SQL and at the same time, they can also get a sense of your product intuition. The main issue with these is that if you have bad product intuition and you then work on a SQL query, you're either gonna make your life really difficult by working on a SQL problem that's extremely difficult or on the entirely wrong problem. So let's just dive into this question and then see how it goes. All right, an online marketplace company has introduced a new feature that allows potential buyers and sellers to conduct audio chats with each other prior to transacting. Let's say we have two tables that, that rep represents this data. So we have a chats table and we have a marketplaces purchases table. How would you measure the success of this new feature? Write a query that can represent if this feature is successful or not. How do we tackle this problem? So the first thing we have to do is to treat this like it's a classic product metrics, just any kind of analytics case study, right? So we're doing stuff like we're clarifying, we're assessing requirements, we're validating our solution. Before that, we're proposing a solution and then we're validating it. Yeah, let's just start out with that first. And you know, given the time constraints of most of these interviews, I would say the most optimal thing that we're gonna be doing is actually be proposing one metric and immediately coding that up. I think in every instance, we also wanna keep this metric pretty simple. I see a lot of candidates shoot themselves in the foot by first proposing like a really complicated metric. And then when they actually have to code it up in SQL, they're just, spending you know like 40 minutes the rest of the time trying to get to a solution the best way and i think always the best way to approach this is always iteration right so we iterate on our approaches we propose a simple solution and then we code it up and we do that and we do that fit fast and then we ask the interviewer hey is that good or not and they're like no do something a little bit more complicated and then they'll be like okay yeah so i'll do something new now so <laughs> again let's try to iterate on all of our solutions here and start out by keeping it simple. KISS framework, right? Keep it simple, stupid. The second tip is to keep the metric super flexible for further analysis, okay? So if we start out with just one simple solution, then we can actually make it flexible so that later down the line, we are also not cheating ourselves on the foot again by having to rewrite our entire SQL query. We want to be able to make it so that we can actually write it in a way that is flexible for further solutions down the line. Given this problem, and given that we have to understand how a feature basically allows users to conduct audio chats with each other, try this again is just to visualize exactly what the output is that I want. So I want something that says, use audio chat, right? And then if it is a one or a zero, 
Then I want also purchase completion rates. And then this is going to be something like, you know, 50%. And then this will be something like 25%, right? So this is the output that I want to see, right? If I'm a PM, I want to see that, oh, people that use the audio chat completed their purchases at a higher rate than people that did not use audio chat. Okay, so awesome. We visualize this output. We come up with this metric. Next thing I want to note in our analysis is that, you know, if we'd like to expand the analysis, we can actually analyze it by the call duration or the number of calls. And so uh, conversations that probably have on average three audio chats or 2x the total length of call time than other conversations are more likely to have transactions completed than something that has, you know, on average one audio chat and then like 30 seconds of call time instead of one minute of call time on average. And those have a lower transaction rate. Let's say we're analyzing call chat time, basically like 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 90 seconds. And then we look at our metric that we care about, which is purchase completion rates, 30%, 50%. 69%. Basically, we're seeing that, you know, on average, if we bucket our call chat time, and as the chat time goes longer, the purchase completion rates go higher, then probably this audio feature is then working for us. So I just want to say that out of all of our metrics that we put together, one thing that we do have to keep in mind is normalizing the data. So usually we have to compare two equally interested groups of conversational buyers so that we know that the audio chat feature is actually making the difference. It's not the fact that because I make more calls, I'm already inherently more likely to complete a transaction. And so a lot of that normalization, you know, we can't really do that with our existing data set. So I would just make that assumption up front so that you get extra brownie points with your interviewer. And you know, most of the analytics problems are all causal inference. So if you mention, you know, like, you know, causal inference, they're like, oh, cool, you know what causal inference is, let me check off this box, right? To be honest, that is really what a lot of interviewers uh, and interviews are like because of the fact that they have to do so many interviews. They're just trying to speed it up so they can get to their lunch break. <laughs> all right, so let's just solve for this uh, simple calculation first, right? We just wanna know if they use the audio chat did they actually increase their purchase completion rate? First, I'm gonna write select from chats, left join marketplace purchases as C as MP on C dot buyer user ID equals MP dot buyer user ID. Look at that autocomplete. Oh my god. You need to pay our engineers more. Uh, user ID is equal to np.seller user ID uh, group by call connected. So when we group by the call connected, uh, so as you can see, we're doing double join, right? We want to join the buyer to the buyer of the chat and to the buyer of the marketplace. And we want to join the seller of the chat to the seller of the marketplace. Uh, and then we want to group by if the call was connected or not. And then we want to grab the distinct marketplace ID divided by this distinct number of chats, right? And then I can just run this query. Hopefully it'll run. I have an error. Of course I have an error. I didn't comment this out. Let me comment this out. Cool, awesome. So as you can see below, um, and I'll move with my video, the number of calls that were connected resulted in a higher conversion rate. Obviously this is fake data, so of course it was going to. So we're good, except I spot an error in our SQL query. And um, if you want to pause the video, maybe you guys can try to find it first before I go on. Okay, let's unpause it. So where is the error in my SQL query? Basically, what I noticed was that if you look at chats, um, technically you could have more than one chat with the same person, right? So if I call this person once, twice, they don't pick up, then I call the seller three times, they finally pick up then technically I'm actually grouping by call connected, which would then mess up my data, right? Because I'd have two zeros and then a one. And so if I group by that, then this wouldn't really work out and this data is wrong. So what I have to do instead is group by the distinct number of chats and then rejoin it. So let's do that again. So instead, let me think, I still think I can reuse some of my data here. So I'd say, let's group by the buyer user ID 
the seller user ID. And then let's run actually a function in here where we want to know if there was at least one connection. So instead, our actual formula means use audio chat at least once. Because here, you know, technically, if I'm like talking to this guy and I make two purchases, you know, without the audio chat, but then I use the audio chat in a separate purchase and I use it at least once, but then I chat with him, like I create like three different chats with that same guy. I want to know if at least using it once influenced and gives me a higher purchase completion rate than never using it ever, right? This is the bare bones analysis. If I use this feature at least once, does it do anything? Does it change up, you know, the completion rates at all? So here we're going to just run a max on call connected. So this means that for every buyer seller combo, did they at least connect on a call at least once? So then I'll label this at least one connection call connected. Then next I'll just do count distinct mp.id, same as this one, divided by the, um, uh, actually no, so instead I'll just use, I will also just group by one and two. So as total purchases, gotcha. And then I'll wrap this in a subquery and be like with distinct chat as this. So uh, we're grabbing the, um, this is total purchase, this is actually completed transaction, right? So we know that we completed this transaction. So now I want to group by this value, right? And I can do that with the CTE. So I'm grouping by this. This is going to be um, distinct chats. And then uh, group by this value one. And then now I can actually just look at the average number of completed transactions. And then the sum of completed transactions. Okay, cool. So why did I make this completed transaction? So basically for every combo, um, what this query does is that it basically finds exactly if there's at least one call connected and then if there's a completed transaction. So for example, you know, one buyer and seller, they didn't connect on a call, no completed transaction. Let's say they did complete at least one call and they did complete a transaction. So this would be effectively just, you know, one because they're only doing one transaction either way. So once we take the average of this, we're taking the average of ones and zeros. And so that's how we're getting this value of 0.435% or sorry, 4.35% and 3.92%. That's this, that's the data analytics case question. I think this is a great kind of solution for now. Um, I think one last thing I'd like to do is like, why don't we try to do an analysis and see if like more call completions lead to more purchase transaction rates. So kind of that scenario that I was drawing above, except this one is like, if we have three audio chats instead of two audio chats instead of one audio chat like does the three audio chats lead to more completed transactions than the one audio chat if it does then it probably means that audio chats are beneficial for this business so i'll actually leave that for the exercise for you guys if you guys want to see the answer just go to interview query go to the link below and then you'll see the answer in the solution bar right here because i'm going to finish that before this video comes out officially and i hope this was helpful uh, I hope this video isn't all over the place. I hope I have a really good video editor that helps me out with this stuff. And please remember to like and subscribe on this video so I can go through this exercise of doing more videos for you, even though, you know, I'm jumping back into it. So it's been a painful experience so far, but I'm hoping I'll get better and better at it. I just need your guys' support. Awesome. All right, cool. Thanks. Bye.